Welcome back to the Tom Hartman program. I'm Alex Lawson, filling in for Tom, and joining us on the phone, amazing investigative journalist, author, uh, orca expert, and friend of mine, Dave Nywert. Uh, Dave, welcome to the Tom Hartman program. Hey, great to be here, Alex. Uh, glad I'm glad to be here. And uh, I want to talk to you about your new book and just generally what you're talking about in it uh, as well. But your new book is Alt America, The Rise of the Radical Right in the Age of Trump. Um, this is something that you've been writing on. You've been following uh, the basic ex right extremism for a long time. And, you know, whenever I have questions, as you know, about anything in this area, I always turn to you. So tell me about the book and how, you know, how you see it. Well, um, you know, actually, I, I wanted to be spending the last couple of years writing a book about uh, humpback whales. But, um, but then Trump came along and kind of changed my plans. Um, and that's because he, he really... Uh, I mean, the reason I wrote this book was that it became very clear to those of us who've been monitoring the radical right for a long time that Trump was having this really powerfully stimulative effect on their organizing and on their recruitment and on all of the things that the radical right likes to do. Um, and, and in fact, we were seeing the Internet numbers and just the general numbers for um, new groups really going through the roof is a lot in a large part because of the what we would call the Trump effect. Uh, Trump himself didn't deliberately, at least overtly, um, seek out the the assistance of these people. Rather, they were drawn to him. Um, but he did a lot of wink and nudge stuff along the way that definitely encouraged them. And uh, so, it, you know, it was really is a source of growing concern for this, for us, especially in the area of hate crimes. We were starting to see hate crimes go through the roof. And indeed, this was, you know, one of the real Trump effects after the election. In the first month after the election, there were nearly a thousand hate incidents all around the country that just, which is just an obscenely high rate for hate crimes and hate incidents. Um, and I went through the database, um, that the SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center, collected on these uh, crimes, and it became very evident that, uh, you know, nearly half of those uh, incidents involved people uh, chanting Trump's name, uh, using Trump's rhetoric, um, making references to Trump, and clearly they were inspired by Trump. I mean, this was a lot of, they, they felt that Trump and his election had more or less given them permission to act out in this violent and vile fashion. And so this is why I wrote it. So Dave, when uh, you and I uh, first started working together, I was actually uh, building a team at Media Matters focused on, this is in 2010, uh, focused on guns and extremism and the, the ease of access of guns and its intersection with extremist rhetoric and so I spent a lot of time watching this and, and actually, you know, as I said, I turned to you uh, and reading your stuff. And, and you've been following this for a long time. I would say in 2010, it, you know, it was new to me. So I'm starting to watch this and I start seeing, uh, I'm just going to it, paint it one way, but Glenn Beck at the time was starting to use some wink and nods and some code words that were really courting uh, the straight out neo-Nazi right, right? Like Stormfront and white nationalists and, and, and really creating this space that allowed them to become even more extreme. And, you know, the way it was explained to me is if you, if you have like a, a white nationalist sitting there watching, you know, Glenn Beck, and I'm going to bring this to, say, Tucker Carlson now, or you're seeing it more and more. The corporate media are actually using tropes and talking points and, and, and framing things in a way that are extremely recognizable to white nationalists who've, who've been, like, this is all they do. Their identity is caught up in it. 
And it's somewhat like if the corporate media is doing this, then that gives me, the, the white nationalist who's watching it, space to be even more reactionary, even more aggressive, and to act out on these things that, uh, you know, previously they might have stayed in their little court over there. And that is what Trump has really done, in, in my view, is given, it's like, he doesn't have to come out and say anything, like, and he never would, uh, you know, go out and, and uh, commit hate crimes around the country. That's not how it works. It's the, it's the neutral reaction, right, like the Charlottesville, uh, which had a, a terroristic murder in the middle of it by white nationalists. And, you know, he said, that, I don't remember the quote, but fine people on both sides or, or something like that. Like, that, the strength of that. Yeah announcement from the president is is really massive can you can you go into that a little bit yeah well he basically legitimizes them as did glenn beck as does tucker carlson uh they're they're what they're doing i mean part of you have to understand that what they've done is create this epistemological bubble for themselves i call it alt america it's this kind of alternative universe that they have spun together out of conspiracy theories and bizarre speculation, um, fake scandals that have been drummed up by uh, the far right and by the mainstream right uh, for years and years. And it creates this uh, sort of alternative universe for them in which they can dwell and um, in which all of these uh, really sort of hateful ideas uh, really have full play. Uh, I think the classic case is, you know, what what Glenn Beck was doing, for instance, was he was promoting Alex Jones-style conspiracy theories about FEMA concentration camps and uh, how, how President Obama secretly hated white people. Um, and that wasn't a conspiracy theory. That was actually just their belief. But it was typical of the kind of pseudo facts that they and ideas with which they um, surround themselves and they've assembled into a sort of functioning alternative universe for themselves. So by the time Trump came along, um, it was ready made for him. And he's and he clearly is a creature of that alternative universe. I mean, we know that he built his <laughs> the foundation of his political career was. Uh, the birther conspiracy theory, and he's continued to, you know, play footsie with Alex Jones so and Dave, a number let me, of let, conspiracy let theorists. Me, let me go. Uh, I want to sure. spend a, a minute with the uh, birther stuff because I want. I posit that that is massively explanatory on uh, on how he connected with this crowd. Right, that as a that's how he built yes. his political career. And that was a key thing in this white nationalist alt-right community. Yes, absolutely. No, it was. It told them that he was one of them, and that was why they um, rather eagerly adopted him come 2015. Although we really didn't see them pile on uh, in support of Trump until he announced his immigration plan, and that was when we actually saw. And that was in August of 2015, uh, two months after you know he had announced his campaign, and he it was very so, clear. Dave, can you can you stick with us through the break yeah. and come back on the other side? You bet, absolutely. Fan fantastic, because uh, I want to keep this discussion going uh, with Dave Nywert, who is at the Southern Poverty Law Center and the author of Alt America: The Rise of the Radical Right in the Age of Trump. And we will continue this conversation right after this short break.